you do quote uh, sources on the record and also on, on background anonymously. You quote an unnamed senior White House official saying, quote, the president's insane. Was that person speaking literally or figuratively? I, I think he was venting his frustrations, uh, this particular official. Uh, we sat down one afternoon to talk about how things were going. Uh, with this particular uh, source's area of expertise. I don't want to get too deeply into, uh, into that, but uh, plopped down in the, in the seat in front of me and said, the president's insane. And I later went back and talked to this official and said, well, why did you uh, say that? And yeah. this official said, you know, really, I was just frustrated with the president's lack of understanding about the Constitution, the, the constraints placed on the presidency, you know, guardrails that were put in place by our founding fathers. Uh, the president wanted to know how long you can keep an acting secretary on. He wanted to know, uh, you know, uh, what else he could do with his cabinet. And it, it's this kind of behavior behind the scenes that really frustrates his top officials, I think, a lot more than people understand. And I, I so, so I think this, this official was trying to explain all of that. One, uh, you mentioned Kellyanne Conway. Her husband, George Conway, continues to say the president is mentally unwell, unfit. Take a look at his latest tweets from today saying the president should resign and seek psychological treatment. Uh, I commented that the tweets are astonishing coming from the husband of a top White House official. And Conway wrote back and said, what's astonishing is the media's and the nation's utter failure to confront the fact that we have a psychologically unwell and unfit president. How do you view this as someone who covers the Trump White House every day, that these questions are even out there at all? Well, I get asked this question from time to time. I, I tell folks, uh, Brian, I'm not a psychiatrist, uh, so I can't uh, assess the president's uh, mental state. But I, I will tell you my f sense of it is, covering him for a pretty long period of time now, is that he's more crazy like a fox. And, you know, for example, I talk about in the book, you know, Steve Bannon explains in, in an interview that I had with him that, you know, what Trump tries to do is really control the narrative by saying sensational things that sound wild and, and nutty sometimes. And he does this because he knows it dominates the news cycle. And mm -hmm. so that makes it makes it a, a priority for us in the news business to talk about him nonstop. And he loves that. And he capitalizes that. Well, about that, uh, do you have any regrets? Do you have any regrets? You said some White House aides do you. Do you have any regrets? Do I have any regrets? You know, I, I wish uh, at times that the press had been a bit more in solidarity with one another. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and standing up to this White House and saying, listen, um, you know, the president can't call us the enemy of the people. We're, we're not going to go along with that. And I think we've missed some opportunities here and there to challenge that. I will say one of the things that I'm most grateful for yeah. uh, during this experience is how just about every news organization in Washington and here in New York stood behind us here at CNN when they took away my press pass. Yeah, that was a lawsuit. very important First Amendment case, and I talk about it in the book. Had the, the Trump administration won that uh, case, Brian, it would have sent shockwaves through our industry. It would have put a, a real chilling effect on the First Amendment in this country. And people might say, oh, you're just puffing yourself up. You're, you know, you're higher in your own fumes. No, the Trump administration's own lawyers went into the courtroom and said that the president of the United States can throw out whoever he wants out of the White House. And we just couldn't have a situation like that. And so I was really grateful. You talk about regrets. One of the things I'm most uh, grateful for is that almost our entire industry stood behind mm -hmm. us during that time. And had, had they not, I think it, it could have worked out a different way. Mm -hmm. And so I think we, you know, uh, it hasn't been perfect. We're all grappling with how do we cover this president. Uh, but my sense of it is, is that we have to stand for the truth. We're not just here to report the news. Uh, we're here also to defend the truth. And when you have a president who has uh, made, uh, you know, 10,000 false or misleading statements since the beginning of his administration, you know, that makes us fact checkers in real time. It right. puts us in a position where, unlike the Republicans who controlled the government for two years, uh, sort of makes the fourth estate, the press, really the check on a presidency that sometimes goes outside the bounds of normal presidential behavior.